what's the best budget new GPU for local AI? We have an AMD RX 9060 XT 16GB and the NVIDIA 5060 Ti 16GB. Both are PCIe Gen 5 and have an X8 width, and both of these have common 8 pin power. We're going to benchmark their performance in LM Studio, and we're going to test them on the 7995WX rig running 6400 speed DDR5 to truly allow these GPUs to show their best. Let's start with the RX 9060XT, and this is around 360 now, and this one is the XFX Pro Gaming Swift. Then we will be going to the PNY 16 gigabyte 5060 Ti. We will see if the extra 70 bucks is worth it. Both of these GPUs are likely to be considered if you're looking for new GPUs. So we've got LM Studio loaded up here. The drivers that I'm using are 25, 20, 01, 14, and that was released 9, 19, 2025. So let's go ahead and check out the speed though of what we're able to generate here in three different models. We'll start off with OpenAI's GPT OS S 20B, and this should allow us to do full GPU offload. I'm gonna drag that up there. That was 23 of 24, so I just drug it up, made it 24 of 24. All right, so we'll create a new chat here, write a story about a shopping cart. And you can see the text generation is actually doing pretty darn good. And I would strongly suggest if this is what you're looking at in specifically Windows, that you consider the text generation is probably gonna be one of your best use cases for this. So we came out with 89.29 tokens a second for 1,192 tokens, and that was 0.1 second to the first token generation. So not bad at all. Next, we're gonna move on to the Quinn 34B thinking 2507 checkpoint and load this up. And one of the nice things about this is it has a huge context window. And on a GPU like this, you should be able to actually get a pretty good amount of utilization out of it. All right, and you can see it really thinking and churning there. And that was 94 tokens per second for 1,561 tokens. I think that's a really good speed considering you're just up to almost 100 tokens per second on a very budget-friendly GPU. Finally, we're gonna try Magistral Small 2509. And this one is not gonna fit completely into VRAM, so there will be some of this that is offloaded onto the system RAM. That's gonna be probably about a quarter of it total. So let's go ahead, load this up, and hit regenerate on this. This one should come in a decent bit slower. And that came out at 16 tokens a second for 1,495 tokens, 0.88 to the first token. So right there, you've got a pretty good offload, but you can see how the impact of going from VRAM to partially split, even with a quarter of it only going to system RAM, still slows things down quite a bit, coming in at 16 tokens per second, versus if we had a GPU loaded in there that was able to fully load this into its VRAM, it would probably go significantly faster than this. So those were all just the default settings. Let's go ahead and get the 5060 Ti tossed into there and see what its performance is with Okay, let's get LM Studio running here with the NVIDIA. And we'll load up GPT OSS 20B. Again, we'll bump that up to all the layers and we'll get a story about a shopping cart. And we hit 102.25 tokens per second, 672 total tokens, decent, little bit faster. Now let's check out Quinn 3 and load this one up. 
and regenerate that. And each time that you regenerate it, it is flushing with context. You can see the percentage full right down there that the context is. And that hit 107.38 tokens per second for 1,253 tokens. And finally, we're going to load in Magistral Small, and this one, 29 out of 40, just like the AMD 9060 And in both instances, a little bit of that offload is going to system RAM, which eight channels of 6400 does provide quite a bit of system bandwidth, but still not, a, not enough, not as much as either of these GPUs most likely on this system in Windows running like it's running right now. And 17.28 tokens per second and 1,409 tokens total. If you wanted to, you probably can go and enable flash attention. I know for sure this should work on an NVIDIA card. I'm not sure about on the AMD. So let's hit all the layers onto the GPU and also turn on flash attention. You may have to adjust some of your settings in LM Studio because it gets a little bit complainy whenever it's pushing if you don't have disabled all of the overload protections. Let's give it a regen now. Yeah, that looks a little bit faster. And with flash attention, it hit 108.82 tokens a second. Again, I'm not sure on the AMD whether or not flash attention. I didn't think to check it, which bad on me. But let, let me know in the comments below if you do know. Certainly flash attention on NVIDIA does speed things up just a little bit. So I would recommend you consider that. So we have a bit of a difference here. Let's get into those numbers. I was first off incredibly impressed at the small difference, just a little bit slower, that the AMD GPU was able to handle in Windows with LM Studio. Certainly, they've done quite a bit of work for optimizing the AMD stack along with GGML and Llama C++. Those people have done a tremendous lift and it really shows the performance is really good. So we saw right around 90 tokens per second for GTP, GPT OSS 20B on the AMD, and we saw 102 with the 5060 Ti. That's only 12 tokens. Now, with flash attention enabled, it did go faster. I don't know if it would go faster on the AMD. Now, let's talk about use cases and likely scenarios for somebody that is considering one of these two GPUs. Somebody who probably is looking for a budget setup for a all-in-one desktop running Windows is my guess. Now, these will definitely be featured in some future videos in Linux, but that's going to take a little bit of time. Make sure to tune in for those. Now, this is also looking just at text generation, not image generation or video generation. So, I would say this about video generation. Uh, we've seen the 5060 Ti a couple times in video generation. No matter what, it's not going to be very fast. And as a matter of fact, it's going to be incredibly slow. And not being able to run a full 24 gigabyte model is going to definitely impact the quality. Yes, you can do it, but it will impact the quality. And in video generation, where state of the art is right now with things like WAN, you definitely don't have a whole lot of quality that you're willing to sacrifice. So I would say neither of these are really that good for video generation, and I would not consider these for that. I would really seriously recommend you save up for a 3090. Now, I am going to be playing some gaming this weekend, maybe do a little Battlefield 6, and I will definitely have some testing around what kind of frames we're able to get on that, because I think that'll be a pretty cool head-to-head -head also. But I think very seriously, you would have to consider the $70 price difference definitely makes me think a 9060 XT could be a really good choice. Now, can you run multiple like you can with NVIDIA and get similar performance? I don't have firsthand knowledge of that yet, and I want to be able to put that to the test before I tell you. So I definitely think that we will get to the point where we have that pretty soon here. I would say this is a great GPU to consider if you are looking for a really good 
very budget friendly, 360 ish. Some of them are down to 350 still, uh, but 350, $360 range GPU. Are you going to get more bells and whistles with the NVIDIA? Yes, probably you are. Can you do video generation with it? Whereas the video generation you can do with this, I can only say right now, it might be a little rough around the edges. I know that I tried to use something called a Muse. It was total slop what came out. Whereas with the 5060 Ti, you can technically get something that is eh, not that bad. I'm not sure you're going to use it for very much. But if you're looking at image generation, I would expect the NVIDIA to have a slight edge out over the AMD on that as well. Certainly for gaming and if you're looking at frame gen, they're two different technologies. So which games you're playing could have a big impact on that. Me playing Battlefield 6, I'll be letting you know which one of the frame gens works better and what I'm getting for frames per second at what resolution. I think this is a fantastic GPU though. I am really glad that I was able to pick it up for the price that I got it at. And definitely I think if you are considering whether to go AMD or whether to go Nvidia, the gap is closer than I thought by quite a bit. I mean, seeing Quinn 4 b thinking hit 94 here and 107 here, I call that almost a wash. Now, if you get into an offload scenario, like with Magistral, 16 versus 17.3, that is a very small difference. That is a very cost-effective way to actually look at going with something that is an AMD. I think this is very optimistic, and I am very happy to report this definitely has my recommendation as a very good consideration for local AI servers on a budget. You can find links to the RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte in the description below, as well as the 5060 Ti, and I also will put some links down there for some videos that I've done on them already. Shout out and hats off to our channel members who got me this awesome, pretty cool GPU that we're gonna be learning more about as we are diving into things like image generation and Linux shortly. And if you haven't taken a chance, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about the channel and especially all of the hardware benchmarks that we've done in the past, check out this playlist here. There is a ton of really good benchmarks in there with a very large variety of GPUs. So much information. So much information. Yeah, watch it. Watch it.